Hello, my name is Dr Colin Crooks. I'm a researcher at the University of Nottingham and my supervisors are Dr Tim Card and Dr Joe West. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about our paper, Reductions in 28-Day Mortality Following Hospital Admission for Upper Gastrointestinal Hemorrhage. Now, upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage, or, or bleeding from the um, gullet, stomach and small bowel, is, is one of the commonest acute medical admissions to gastroenterology, and it carries a significant mortality with it. There have been a number of improvements in, in management of this condition over the last two decades, in particular the increased use of proton pump inhibitors to reduce stomach acid and therefore stabilise blood clots, and also the increased amount of evidence for using combination therapy at endoscopy to reduce the amount of re-bleeding. However, despite this, the largest population-based studies have failed to show an improvement in mortality over the same time period. And one of the reasons for this could be that patients presenting with upper gastrointestinal bleeding are coming into hospital sicker, perhaps because they have more um, comorbidity, they have a higher burden of other illnesses. It could also be that Patients coming to hospital are just gradually getting older and therefore have an increased mortality associated with their age. To try and understand these issues more, more thoroughly, we need a large population-based cohort with consistent coning throughout and we need it to be able to provide enough power to adjust adequately for comorbidity and age changes in the population. Within England, we have the hospital episode statistics database, which records every admission to hospital. This is also linked to the Office of National Statistics database with all the um, dates and facts of death. Now, we found just over half a million upper gastrointestinal bleed admissions. And when we looked at crew mortality associated with this, we found there was a slight increase over the first half of the study, which then reduced again towards the end of the study. When we looked at any changes in age, we found there was a corresponding increase in the age of the population over the first half of the study, which fell away towards the end of the study. So when we adjusted for changes in age, the changes in mortality flattened out. We then went on to look at any changes in comorbidity and found that the comorbidity in the population of patients presenting with bleeding gradually increased throughout the course of the study. So then when we went and adjusted for this, we found there was an almost steady linear reduction in mortality throughout the course of the study. So in conclusion, we, we found a very encouraging result that all the changes in, to the management of upper gastrointestinal bleeding seem to be having an effect in that there's been a steady reduction in 28-day mortality following admission. We also are able to answer the question of why previous smaller studies weren't able to find this reduction we feel this is because changes in comorbidity and age will have partially obscured um, the gradual reduction in mortality that was occurring. But finally, we, we, the one concerning finding we found was that the older age group had a much smaller reduction in mortality over time compared to the younger age groups. And this possibly suggests that the older age groups have yet to fully benefit from um, improvements in management at the younger age population have seen. Thank you very much for listening.